So if you're watching this video, you are moving into what we would call the most common ACT questions that come from your Algebra 1 subject. This first video in this playlist is about writing equations or what we would call translating math. Now, from an ACT standpoint, sometimes this means taking the actual word problem and creating an equation or creating an expression. But sometimes it's just taking the word problem and figuring out the calculation that needs to be done. Now, I want to be very clear about this before you jump too far into these types of problems. In your math class, your teacher may be very adamant about you actually writing an equation, writing in a verbal equation, and then putting the parts in and assigning a variable, and then solving for that variable or whatever the problem may ask you to do. Keep in mind that the ACT is about speed, and it's about getting correct answers. So some of these questions I may not actually formally set up what you would consider a equation in the textbook sense. I'm just trying to get the answer as quickly as possible. Also, one of the things I want you to keep in mind as well, I am kind of talking out my thoughts and also explaining some tips and tricks that you could use on the ACT math test. So this is going to go a little slower than what you would actually do if you were taking the test. A lot of this stuff you would do and your thought processes would go a lot faster and you would get these answers a lot quicker. And in some cases, you may not even write down all of the information that I'm writing down for you. You would do a lot of this in your calculator. So just remember that as we're going through these problems. All right, let's take a look at this first, uh, first problem. It says here, Sophie earns her regular pay of $14 per hour for up to 40 hours a week. All right, that's probably going to be pretty important information. We're going to need to know that. It says, for each hour over 40 hours a week, she earns one and a half times her regular pay. So one and a half times her regular pay. Let's just go ahead and make that quick calculation because that's probably going to be useful. She's going to get $14 an hour normally, but she's going to earn one and a half times. Now it's written as a mixed number. Anytime that I can write this as a decimal and make it a little bit easier, that's, that's useful to do. So 14 times 1.5 or one and a half is $21. So she's going to get paid $14 an hour for her first 40 hours a week, but she's going to get paid $21 an hour for anything over 40 hours. So it says, how much does Sophie earn in a week if she works 48 hours? Well, we know that she's going to earn $14 a, a, an hour for 40 hours, but we're also going to get $21 an hour for the remaining eight hours, and that's over 40. And so $560 for her base pay and an additional 168. So Sophie would earn $728 for her week of 48 hours. And so if we look at the answer choices, we can see that that is choice C. $728. Notice that I, you know, kind of broke this up. I didn't I didn't go through the formalized process necessarily of defining the equation of, of how her pay is calculated and creating a variable or anything like that. I just interpreted what the problem gave me and I created the numbers that I needed to to come up with, with her pay. The faster you can do this, the better. There's no formal math that needs to take place here. All right, number two. Mr. Dietz is a teacher whose salary is $22,570 for this school year, which has 185 days. In Mr. Dietz's school district, substitute teachers are paid $80 a day. If Mr. Dietz takes a day off without pay and a substitute teacher is paid to teach Mr. Dietz's classes, how much less does the school district pay in salary by paying the substitute teacher instead of paying Mr. Dietz for that day. Well, we know that they are going to pay the substitute $80 per day, so that's the sub. What we need to figure out is how much Mr. Dietz is paid on a per day basis so that we can figure out how much less the school is paying. Now, again, this is a situation where you have this word problem, you have a whole bunch of numbers and you're trying to figure this out, there's no need to formally write out some sort of equation or get real technical about your math. Just figure out the numbers that you need and then use them in a way that helps you get the answer. Now, for us to get Mr. Dietz's per day 
uh, salary, we need to take his annual salary, which is 22570 and divide it by the number of days that he's going to work, which is 185 school days. And so if we do that, what that's going to give us is $122 per day. And we can now take that $122 and subtract the 80 that we're paying the sub and we can see that the difference is $42 difference or $42 less paying the sub and that would be answer choice A in this case. Okay, so number three here you can see what I want you to look at whenever you start working ACT math problems a lot of times the answer choices can kind of give you an idea of what you need to be doing before you even start working so it's good to kind of glance at the answer choices just to see what the final format is the last thing you want to do going into a problem is go do a whole bunch of work that's unnecessary. I've seen a lot of students lose time on the ACT by trying to solve something and they weren't even being asked to solve for that. So you can take a quick glance at the answer choices and have a good idea before you even start working the problem what you're trying to accomplish. So this is your classic ACT uh, translation problem where you're actually trying to take the word problem and create an equation, a formal textbook equation that you probably learned in your Algebra 1 class to represent the situation that the uh, word problem is, is implying here. So it says Danica is trying to encourage her classmates to donate books for the fundraiser and book drive for the local library. Danica will donate $35. So just $35 straight off the bat. Let's, let's kind of throw that in there. So we know that she's going to donate $35. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and put a plus sign to represent the word plus, seven cents for each book. So whenever we see this in, from a translation standpoint, for each book, we know, and it says here later on in the problem, it says, which of the following equations gives Danica's donation in dollars? So we want to know her dollars for every book that is donated. So if we have seven cents times each book. Anytime we see per or for each, we know that we're multiplying. We're going to get seven cents for each book. So if 10 books are donated, we're going to multiply 10 times 0.07 and then we're going to add that to 35 and that's going to be the total dollar amount of the donation. So we basically have pieced together a, a we've pieced together an equation here and now we just need to match it up to the correct answer and we can see that the correct answer in this choice is A. Again, we have for problem number 4 another translation problem that we are trying to set up an equation that represents the scenario in problem. Now, interestingly enough, you could probably figure this out without writing anything down, but I'm going to kind of write some stuff down just to kind of show you the thought processes that I would go through in my brain. So it says on Monday, Jan and Diego opened separate bank accounts with initial deposits of $28 and $161 respectively. Now, I'm going to just kind of give me a visual here. Okay, so I know that Jan opened up a bank account and she had $28 and Diego opened up a bank account and he had $161. It says every Monday after opening the accounts, Jan will add $825, so she's going to add, excuse me, $18.25 and Diego will withdraw $15, so he's actually going to uh, take out $15. It says which of the following equations when solved gives the number of weeks after opening the accounts that they will have the same amount of money? So we basically want to know when these two accounts are going to equal. So if Jan keeps adding $18.25 and Diego keeps subtracting $15, when will those two accounts equal? So that's basically what we're trying to get. So we know that, that Jan's account started with $28, not 28 times W. So we, we know that that is going to be out. We know that Diego's account started with $161 not subtracting 161 so we know that that equation is out so just by doing some quick analysis of what the answer choices are we can immediately eliminate two answer choices and so you always want to be on the lookout for process of elimination what can I get rid of and narrow down my answer choices now the other thing this little visual that I made over here to the right really helps is I know that I'm adding $18.25 for every single week 
for Jan, and I'm subtracting $15 every single week for Diego. So if I look at the answer choices again, I know that A cannot be correct because I'm not subtracting 1825, and I know that B can't be correct because I'm not adding $15 for Diego. So that leaves me just through process of elimination as D as the final correct answer. And so there's a whole bunch of ways that you could have come up with that. You may have been able to just look at the answer choices and figured it out right off the bat, but Giving the visual, I think, kind of helps for people who have had trouble creating equations in math classes in the past. All right, number five. And we can see by a quick glance at the answer choices again, we're trying to come up with an expression this time, not necessarily an equation. But again, we're trying to interpret what the word problem is, is trying to calculate. It says Sienna will be paid 75 dollars plus 25 percent of her total weekly sales okay so again I, I can make a quick at least verbal equation here I know that I'm going to get 75 dollars plus 25 percent of weekly sales so that kind of gives me a verbal explanation of what's going on for the hour she is scheduled to work next week let W represent the weekly sales so I know W is going to represent the weekly sales and here's the thing we should know from our pre-algebra that we can't represent 25% with the percentage sign in there. We need to convert that to 0.25 for mathematical purposes. It says, which of the following expression gives Sienna's pay in dollars for the hour she is scheduled to work next week? Well, I've already kind of created that by going from this little quick verbal to mathematical. And we know that this is going to equal to her dollars earned. And it's not an equation, it's an expression. So we're just looking for the one that matches up. Now notice, in the answer choices, they have 0.25W first, but then they're adding it to 75. So that makes answer choice A the correct answer. Now, we've found the, cor the correct answer, and in other answer choices, I want you to get in the habit of recognizing how the ACT is actually trying to trick you in some cases and and not fall for that. So notice on D, they put 25W instead of 0.25W. So if, if you would have made the mistake of not converting the percentage to a decimal, you may have taken choice D. So you want to look for those... Uh, when you practice, look for those distracting answers that the ACT is using to try to trick you. Okay, so that's a good start to this playlist. What this playlist is going to have is all the common ACT questions that you see from the most uh, from the skills that show up from Algebra One. And this first skill that we're learning for Algebra One would be what we call math translations, or what you probably learned as writing equations um, from word problems when you went to Algebra 1. And I know that word problems give a lot of students problems or give them trouble on the on math and on the ACT, but keep in mind that over 50% of the questions are going to be word problems on the ACT math section. So, all right, good luck with, the, with your practice. If you like this video, give the other videos a shot. We have a pre-algebra playlist, and then we have all the rest of the videos from Algebra 1 as well. So check those out.